Hi, this is Scott Brown with a Motor Age Tech Tip, and today we'll be covering the importance of proper HVAC refrigeration service on hybrid and battery electric vehicles. Now in hybrid and battery electric vehicles, you're going to find an electrically driven AC compressor supplied by the same voltage potential found in the traction battery. And this voltage level typically ranges from 325 volts to 400 volts DC. Now on later model vehicles like this, you may find that voltage level reaching 800 volts DC. Now within the AC compressor, you have both the high voltage and the power from the low voltage system for the controls. Typically, the isolated high voltage from the traction battery supplies the main working voltage for the AC compressor. And an internal controller powered by the low voltage system is used to manage AC compressor operation. And this is why it may be necessary to have a capable scan tool to properly diagnose AC compressor operation. The motor used to drive the AC compressor is a brushless DC type, which is also referred to as a three-phase AC compressor. A non-conductive polyolefin ester oil, or POE, is used to lubricate the internal components of the electric compressor. Whenever the system is serviced, it is necessary to ensure that the proper amount of refrigerant and oil resides within the system before placing the vehicle back into service. A system low on refrigerant can lead to early compressor failure because a low refrigerant charge can negatively affect the oil lubrication circulation. This is why in my shop, we recommend preventative maintenance by performing periodic AC system services. Now, when it comes to equipment, your MVAC AC service equipment or RRR machines used for servicing electric vehicles must be certified for such use. Your equipment must meet the SAE J2788 standard and be certified to service high voltage electric compressors. If it is to be used on hybrid and electric vehicles using 134A and at the J2843 standard for R1234YF, these machines cannot be equipped with any fluid injection or oil UV dye injection devices as per North American standards. And this aims to minimize the chance of injecting the wrong type of oil from the machine. This standard ensures that the RRR machines can safely and effectively recover, recycle, and recharge refrigerant in MVAC systems, including those with high voltage components. One of the key features for the certification requires that it's to prevent cross-contamination of refrigerant oils, such as PAG and POE oils, which is critical because conductive oils can damage high-voltage systems in EVs and hybrids. Okay, we're using a Fluke 1587 insulation meter, okay? And basically what this does is it's uh, going to run up to 500 volts uh, across uh, terminals to check the insulation property. So this is the pass-through connector on this three-phase compressor here, uh, this old compressor. This is off of a Prius. And I have to push this button to test. So we're gonna go across these two terminals and we're gonna see we're running 527 volts DC through and we're greater than 550 mega ohms, okay? This vial here has brand new POE oil in it. This is oil drained out of an old compressor. And then this is new PAG oil with a little bit of moisture, a little bit of water mixed in there. So we're gonna do a few tests here. So we're gonna drop this in the oil. We're going to close our connector. You see we're showing 526, 527 volts and we're still over 550 mega ohms, okay? So we're gonna drop it into this oil here, and I'm gonna run my test. You can see we're only 160 mega ohms, same voltage, okay? So we'll just move it around a little bit. That looks, that's just old 
uh, pag oil there, okay? This is new pag oil with a little bit of moisture added, and you'll see here, I'm gonna just move it around a little bit. You'll see we have 160. And if I move, if I stir this up a little bit, because the moisture does separate, but of course, as it's moving through the system, it's going to mix, okay? And then we'll drop this in here. You can see now we're at 0.1 mega ohm. We're down to 83 volts DC. Uh, so it steps that down because we've got low, much lower resistance. So, so there's a quick example of insulation properties of refrigerant oils. And if you're servicing both electric and non-electric systems, the RRR machine must be readied by performing a post-flush operation prior to servicing an electric vehicle. All three of our in-house RRR machines are certified for such use. Remember that the dielectric properties of refrigerant oil used in these systems is critical to maintaining electrical insulation and preventing unintended current flow between high voltage components. PAG oils commonly used in conventional AC systems are conductive and unsuitable for use in EV systems because they compromise the electrical insulation requirements. Now carrying out the hose flush procedure is typically simple. The machine will prompt you and that's all you need. And not only should you perform the hose flush prior to servicing the vehicle, one should always close out the service with the hose flush procedure, if, unless the machine is going to be used on nothing but EVs. Now, if you watched our previous AC system service videos, you may have seen the sight glass device that I use that can be leveraged to look at the refrigerant and to see if the vehicle has dye, to get a sense of the lubrication quantity within the system, and to see if there's evidence of other malfunctions such as a failing compressor. We utilize the hose flush operation to prepare the sight glass for use when servicing these AC systems. Now it's pretty simple to do. Okay, so before we use our sight glass, uh, you see this is the sight glass here and actually has a little a clear protector on it here, but um, you've got high pressure glass housing. There is a filter there and you can disassemble this to, to service it. But if we, we wanna go ahead and flush it out and uh, make sure that the oil, uh, oil is out. So basically what you need to do is on the Robin Air machine, you're just gonna get in between this low side uh, connector. And in order to do that, you need a coupler. So this coupler here is a uh, low side to high side. So what we would do is uh, we're gonna make sure that our gate valves on this are actually open on this. Okay, so open both of those. And then we're gonna disconnect our low side from the machine, hook in our adapter, and then we're going to connect that to the high side fitting on our on our tester. Okay, and we can close or open both of these valves here. All right, and then we connect this to the low side fitting on the back of the machine. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and open up both valves and then fire up the machine and then go into the hose flush operation and uh, just let it run and then once it's done uh, you know it'll pull it into a vacuum so this is all ready to go uh, you're going to want to close off both of these valves okay and then close off all of your valve fittings and then disconnect and then you're ready to test Additionally, you'll need to ensure that you have the right injection tools to properly introduce the oil back into the system. Robin Air provides all the right injection tools to make your job a little easier. To avoid cross-contamination of oils, it's a good idea to have multiple injectors clearly labeled for the correct refrigerant and oil type. 
Here we have multiple injectors, and these two are for R134A, one for PAG, and the other for ND11 PoE oil. And over here, we have the Robin Air 1234YF units, one for PAG and one for PoE. Well, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.